Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and uh, this has to do with uh, the overload. We, um, I did have a few questions about overload on a receiver and um, understanding what is overload, can it break the radio, and um, what conditions will make a radio overload or not. And so, um, and, and you know, this is an interesting um, question because overloading happens mostly on portable receivers because their sensitivity is kind of pushed to the max. Uh, why? Because, you know, most of the time you use it on the telescopic and it has to be real sensitive to get uh, the maximum amount of signal out of that little antenna. Uh, it's something you don't see as much on expensive tabletops because they're meant to kind of resist overloading. Um, and that's often why they're more expensive. They kind of have extra tougher circuitry to cope with overload, but it doesn't mean it can't because even a really expensive desktop in certain conditions can still overload. So um, this is, like I said, mostly on portables. Their portables are not all equal. Some overload easy compared to others. And um, an example that I'll have is right here on the, on the screen, that XH Data D808 will tend to have more overloading happening than the Texan PL 990X. Um, it's by design. It's the way that it's done. It's simply that the circuitry on the XH data has a tendency to um, sometimes have a hard time coping with really strong signals. Now, overloading, what does it mean and how do you know it's overloading? Uh, there are two things that make a radio um, that show uh, or an overloaded radio, basically. The most common, you are listening to a station on a frequency and you hear something else. For example, here on 5800 that you see the frequencies punched in on that screen, I might be hearing something, but I might be hearing something else. That is, for example, WWCR, and that's on 5935, is often so strong here in Montreal that I'll hear it at the same time as 5800 if I put an outdoor antenna on it, like my MLE30. Why? Because the receiver circuitry is overloaded by WWCR, and it kind of mixes in with whatever I'm listening close. Overloading will happen generally very close to the frequency you're listening to. So if you're on here, I'm on 5800, I'll have overload from 5935, for example. But I will not have overload from a very strong station that's on, say, 11,800. It's too far away, and that's not where I'm tuned. So usually that's not a problem. It will often happen, like I said, with stations that are very close in frequency, within the same band, for example. You might hear something on 5900 and be overloaded by something on 6100 because it's the same meter band or very close in frequency in general, just a, a couple of hundred kilohertz. So that will be one, and I have several examples on the channel where I've shown some overload, but I will um, intentionally find something to uh, show you overload um, in the next uh, couple of days to, to uh, show you guys what happens again. So that's one thing. Um, overload can also do the reverse, desensitize some radios. What that means is that the amplifier is so overwhelmed by the signal that is close to the frequency that the radio sensitivity just drops to a very low level. Which means you might hear the overloading signal if you tune it, but you might not hear much around it because the radio sensitivity has gone down the drain. An example of that is my ICOM ICR30. This is what happens typically here on my ICOM ICR30 and I can that's, that's one that I can demonstrate easily what happens when a radio gets desensitized by too many strong signals around it. So that is a different thing. On most portables, that's not what you're going to see. On most portables that I've seen on shortwave, what you see is mostly signals mixing in together. You're hearing a signal, and you're hearing another signal that's not supposed to be there, 
at the same time. So you'll be hearing two voices. Um, so that is mostly what happens. Can you overload a radio and break it? No. Signals are strong, can be very strong, but they're not strong enough to damage the radio. So don't worry about damaging a radio with an overloading of signal, which means if you were scared of breaking your radio and you didn't put a big antenna outdoor because of that, don't worry about it. That's not going to break it. It's going to do spurious things. It's going to mix in signals together, but the radio is going to be fine. There's no problem with that. It can even overload on the telescopic. I've seen it sometimes happen when the signals are really, really strong. And um, are there antennas that overload more than others? Well, typically, the better your antenna, the more chances of your radios overloading. It just goes together. Um, it's simply because the antenna, the more it can pick up signals, the more it'll pick up signals, and the more the strong signals are going to be stronger. And at some point, overload possibly. Overloading is not such a sheer, serious issue today. If we would be with these radios in the 70s or 80s when signals were everywhere, it might be a much bigger issue. But today, in our today's world, it isn't too bad. I've seen it a little bit on, say, the 49-meter band. I've seen it on the 19-meter band sometimes with, say, WRMI 15770 mixing in with WWCR 15825. Things like that. Uh, like I said, typically you have to have some really powerful shortwave signals next to you for that to happen. If you live in an uh, area of the world where s shortwave signals tend to be weak everywhere, you have zero, zero reason to, f to uh, you know, go crazy with overload. Put as long a wire as you want. And like I said, don't worry. We won't break the radio. It's not something that is a problem with, uh, with radios. Uh, typically, radios can be, um, you know, broken by um, too strong of a signal, but generally that means you're transmitting too close to it. If I put my XH data in the backyard, turned on, only a feet or two from my ham radio antenna with a 100-watt signal, it's possible I might blow it up and, and it would be incapable of receiving anything. But for shortwave signals that have traveled hundreds of kilometers, if not thousands, even the strongest of signal is not strong enough to break anything in the receiver. So don't worry about that. And uh, the only worries, like I said, is that of a really strong close transmitter, which means all of us ham radio operators got to be careful with our portable radios. When we transmit not have them too close because that could be a problem, yes. If you have more questions about overload and uh, what it is and uh, maybe something else popped up while I was talking as a question, just uh, put it in the uh, comments below. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.